So my shelter system, my shelter system, I actually went with a Gossamer Gear the 2. It's not a hunting company, but they make ultralight backpacking stuff. And I bought the 2 because I figured if I ever go on some backpacking trips with my wife, then I can get her in here or maybe the dog or something and it just gives me that little extra room. I did find trying to set it up on that ridge, it was a little bigger than I would have liked it to have been. But they also, if you want to, it comes in a one man tent, a one man version. This thing weighs like one and a half pounds. It's pretty simple to set up. It comes with a bug net net built in and it gives you a lot of livability. Chris, who I was with, he had a uh, stone glacier tarp system and that's fine for what happened, what ended up happening when we just spent the night overnight, but I know from my own personal experience, if you get a couple days of bad weather where you're not leaving the tent, it's nice to have something with a bit of room in there so it doesn't feel like you just spend two days inside a coffin. I paired this with a pair of Cascade Mountain Carbon trekking poles. These are the trekking poles you get off Amazon. I have two sets of Cascade trekking poles. These are just their standard aluminum trekking poles that I've had for a while and I decided to upgrade those to the Carbon and you can feel the difference in weight in your hand. It doesn't seem like a lot if you look at the specs online. The difference is only like, feels like an, it's like ounces, a couple of ounces per pole, but holding them in your hand like this, you can feel the difference in light weight. So, so yeah, I decided to go to a trekking pole tent because obviously packing out the meat is much, much easier with a pair of trekking poles. This is my first experience packing out meat and I have to admit, if I didn't have trekking poles, it would have been really difficult. And I went with a trekking pole tent over a freestanding tent because I didn't want to have to bring the poles for a freestanding tent plus trekking poles. I'd rather make use of them twice. So at least they're dual purpose. It's always better when you're trying to go lightweight to find things that are going to be dual purpose. Okay, so for my sleep system, this was my first time ever using a quilt. I bought this before the trip. Uh, this is a Enlightened Enigma 20 degree quilt. It's a long, extra wide. I'm six foot. Right now I'm about 197 pounds. In fact, I weighed myself this morning, so I know I'm 197 pounds. Uh, first time using a quilt for me, and I have to say I'm very, very impressed. The nice thing about this quilt is it is definitely a true 20 degree quilt. I have some other stuff that says, you know, it's a, a zero or 15 degree, but when you look at the specs, that's your survival rating, it's not your comfort rating. Before I went on the trip, I had this out in the snow, down to about 24 degrees Fahrenheit at night, I believe it was, and kept me perfectly warm, so I know it's a true 20 degree bag. Super comfortable, super well built, super lightweight. One thing I wish I'd done is added the draft collar, because the only time it gets a little chilly is if the air is coming down your neck, because it obviously doesn't have a hood on it. But yeah, I really liked it. It worked great. Like I say, super lightweight, definitely lighter. I think over my 15 degree sleeping bag that I have normally, this saved me maybe a pound in weight. In fact, in lighting equipment, when they give you, when they custom build, this is custom made, they actually attach this little card to it and tell you how much it weighs according to them. And this came to 26.62 ounces when all was said and done. So maybe just over a, a, a pound and a half, close to, close to two pounds, something like that. Sleeping pad, now sleeping pad, this is where, with the quilt, so if you buy a quilt and it's open at the back, from what I read is you want a better sleeping pad, something with a higher R value but to give you better ground insulation because you lose some insulation because obviously it's only really covers you on three sides, the quilt. So I decided to bring my Thermarest NeoAir X-Therm. Uh, this thing has an R value of like, um, it's somewhere in the sixes I believe. So it's super warm, super comfortable. And this is a pad that I bought specifically to use in the winter, like, like when it's snowing on the snow outside and snow on the ground. In all fairness, we were expecting to see more snow when we got there, but they'd had a couple of days of like really crazy warm weather and the snow melt. No, it actually melted a lot more than we thought. In hindsight, I should have brought both of these. This is my Neo Neo Air, my Thermarest Neo Air X Lite. 
and this only has an R value of maybe like three. So it's only a three season pad. And I decided to go with this pad and this was the only pad I brought with me when I went out there. In retrospect, I would have brought both of these and then I probably would have chosen this one just because like I say, it was warmer than I thought when we got out there. The snow had melted a lot sooner than we thought. So I would have liked to have bring, brought both and been able to choose between the two because this one's about half a pound lighter than this one. In the end it didn't really matter but that's just something to consider. When I think about it, like with sleeping pads and sleeping bags, sleep is very important. You know, once you get tired you start to make mistakes and I always like to err on the side of bringing a little more weight to be a little warmer because you can all I can always take layers off. I can always, you know, unzip a sleeping bag or have it half over me. But if I'm too cold, there's nothing I can do. If I've got all my stuff on and I'm still cold, there's just nothing you can do about it. So I always err a little bit on the side of caution. So that's why I went with this over this one. Next on the sleep system, I have my little inflatable pillow, my Seat Summit Eros pillow. Again, I bring this with me on every camping trip. I found that for the size of it and the weight of it, this just improves the quality of your sleep so much. And again, if you're going to be out there for three, four, five, six, seven days, getting a good night's sleep is crucial to you being alert, being aware, and avoiding mistakes. So, yeah, for this, I, any type of inflatable pillow will do. This is just the one I have. I like this one for me because it's got a little bit of a uh, soft liner on it which is nice obviously in the winter if it's super cold to be able to put your face on one one of the blow up like plasticky ones isn't so nice so having a little just a little cover on it just something to uh, you know take some of that cold away when it gets super cold outside is nice and it's the one I have so okay so into the miscellaneous items Obviously this is just a bag with some toiletries in there, some medications, you know, a couple of band-aids and things like that. Uh, this is, again, this is like my little possibles pouch. Again, it comes with me on all my camping trips and stuff like that, so it's easy just to throw in the bag. You know, it's, it's toothbrush, toothpaste, um, like I say, anti-diarrheal tablets, uh, indigestion tablets, just anything like that you might need, any medications you might need always goes in a little pouch like this. Okay, so miscellaneous stuff that I had with me. First of all, this clipped onto the outside of my bag. This is a Garmin InReach Mini. Uh, first time using an InReach. I brought one, I was the only one who had one. Expensive, worth the money because I was able to send texts to my wife and just let her know that everything was going fine and that I got where I was supposed to be going okay because once we got in there I didn't have any cell service. So it's nice to be able to just, you know, shoot her off a text. You can set up preset messages on this, which I did just saying, I had one that was saying like, you know, got here okay, everything's going fine. One that said, okay, we're about to head off into the back country now. And then I had another one saying like everything's good on my you know on my way out or something like that. So yeah, this came in handy. You can also type text messages on there. It's, it's like a blast from the past because it's kind of like that old you know single type texting that you used to do on the phones. It, you have to pay. I paid the 15 bucks a month or whatever for this service. I'm gonna keep it, keep it on, keep it going because I've got some other trips planned this summer and I wanna do some more remote adventures and it's nice again to be able to text the wife and let her know like, hey, this is what's happening because me and her have a system. Currently, the system before this was basically, hey, if I'm not home by this time on this day, send up a, a, a red flag so this way I can send her a message and just let her know even when I don't have cell service let her know everything's okay because the last thing I want to do is have the emergency services sent out when it's not an emergency and I'm just running late type of deal so so in here first things first I had a Catadyne B3 one liter water filter uh, use these for a while now 
I I really like them. I like the fact that it packs down pretty small, and I just love the flow rate on it. The flow rate is great. It's so much better than other ones I've used, and it's pretty simple. I was maybe on a trip like this next time because this was kind of a pain. I had to go fill this, fill up my water. I brought my two liter Nalgene with me to fill up, and. It would be nice. I had to fill it up out of this little cattle tank. So they make a three liter bag for these. I might get the three liter bag just because I could have filled that up, taken it back to sit in glass and have it hung up and just fill up all my bottles and stuff. That way I would have in one, one fell swoop, you've got three liters of water with you. Easy peasy. Four knives. This is a Benchmade Adamus that I bought when I was kind of a little tipsy on Easter Sunday. <laughs> uh, the problem with the QU pack, obviously I, I like a fixed blade knife a lot of times because I feel like I can deploy it easily and obviously they're very sturdy. The problem with the QU pack is I found that the belt, the hip belt was pushing down on my fixed blade knife and it was actually damaging the sheath so I've got to send that in to be repaired. So I ended up buying one of these super super sturdy knife as you can see it's pretty big pretty hefty knife it's a military style knife tactical style knife and for the most part yeah for what i want it for just to be able to pull it out of the pocket and do random things with works fine honestly you could have got away with any any folding knife if you want to depending on what type of knife you want to carry i just i know a lot of people are knife guys and this is the one that i brought and the problem was i also I was just browsing one day and I saw this and I fell in love with this color scheme that they've got going on so and I'm a Benchmade fan. So after a few whiskeys on 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 Easter Sunday, I ended up buying it and bringing it with me. I also have a Havilon. Obviously, little skinning knife comes with the changeable blades. We've probably all seen these. When we were processing the bear, the guys had the other guys had the razor's edge knives. They were a little bigger. I would honestly say that I would prefer to get one of those after seeing how quickly they were working compared to this. I would probably look at getting a razor's edge knife next time. Cook system. This is just your standard titanium long handle spork. I don't it's by a company called Fitness City. Pretty standard, works great, good for getting down in the mountain houses or getting down into these jet boils, these um, windproof stove systems that they make now. Obviously to go with that cook system I brought, I decided for seven days that I would bring one of the bigger gas stove pieces. For my stove system, I ended up going with this MSR wind burner, which I guess is MSR's version of the jet boil stove. Again, ended up using it for one night and the thing worked absolutely fine. You can actually fit one of these size gas stove cylinders in the bottom. Comes with a little bowl on the bottom, which has markings up to like 12 ounces. So that's pretty nice. Squirrels, get the squirrels. Next up in here, I have Luco tape, which again is just for cuts, uh, blisters, things like that, foot tape. If you ever get any blisters, uh, this is what ultralight backpackers use, guys who are hiking long distances. Luco tape, I decided to bring a full roll of it. I know people wrap it around their trekking poles or their water bottle and things like that. For me, I just keep it on the roll, it doesn't really matter for the couple you know ounce that i might save or something again i'd rather have too much than not enough phone scope case i didn't end up using this i did get the phone scope you know hoping to use a bit more of that but everything happened so quickly that we didn't end up getting any footage through the phone scope then as always pretty standard a flat roll of duct tape i don't i can't tell you how long i've had this now Got it at Home Depot one day, it was at the checkout, one of those little impulse buy things that they stick there to try and get you to buy it as you're checking out. And I did because it's, again, it's flat, it's perfect. Uh, just a little roll of duct tape just in case, you know, help to wrap up any boo-boos, injuries, 
Uh, I've used this stuff to fix my sleeping pad before and to go along with that I also bring always bring a thing of super glue, gorilla glue, crazy glue, whatever you want to call it. Again, good for, you know, putting in cuts, boo-boos, use it in conjunction with the duct tape to fix holes in gear and things like that. It's just something that I always bring and I always will bring. Okay, so next bit, another, again, in this little dry bag is uh, electronics. Obviously for me, electronics, I was out there to film, so I brought some stuff that maybe other people wouldn't need. So with us planning on being out there for seven days, I have this Anchor PowerCore 20,000 milliamp or whatever they are, um, back power bank charging station with a, this one has the solar panel built in. And then I actually have three, no, I actually have two extra batteries for the camera. For glassing, glassing, I had, I bought a pair of Vortex Diamondback binoculars. They were probably, or probably are one of the cheaper binoculars that you can get from Vortex. They work great. I didn't have a problem with them. I'm pretty sure these are the HD version. Uh, in fact, I know they're the HD version and they worked excellent. I bought the little Vortex adapter for 20 bucks to attach them to. Obviously I had my tripod for filming anyway, so I just used my camera tripod that I had and yeah, used this setup to sit in glass and it worked great. These ones came with the, with the harness. These weren't obviously included in my base weight because I had them strapped to my chest. Apart from that, the only other things in my bag were these dry bags. Obviously you've seen, I have one for my electronics. I had one, the little red one that you saw that went in the outside of my bag with gloves and hat in case I wanted to grab that. I have this 30 liter one from AquaQuest, which my sleeping bag actually goes into and goes in the bottom of my bag to keep my sleeping bag dry. And then I also have another 10 litre one from AquaQuest, just like this, but smaller, that all my spare clothes go into to keep them dry. And that was it. And all in all, my base weight with my camera equipment and everything came into 22 and a half pounds. So fully loaded up with seven days worth of food. I would probably say I was in the maybe 35 pound range if that if that i unfortunately i forgot my scale when i went out there so i didn't get an exact read on everything that i had in there obviously i didn't have a rifle with me on this trip so you'd have to add in the weight of the rifle chris who i was with we're gonna do his bag dump at some point uh, obviously he had a rifle and spotting scope and more optics uh, and i know his bag was a lot heavier but apart from that, I believe that's it. There's only one other item that I had in my bag with me, and that is obviously a headlamp. Now, the reason I save this for last is just because I want to use it as an example. Obviously, I've had a lot of experience with ultralight backpacking and things like that in the past, and I'm used to dialing down my pack when I have to. So, you know, one of the things that you have to think about when you're trying to go as lightweight as possible is do you really need it? Do you really need it? Is it something that you really, really need? Best bet is take all the stuff, go before you even think about going hunting, take all the stuff that you think you want to take, go on a couple day trip and see what in your bag you just don't touch. If you don't touch it or you, you barely touch it once, then you just don't need it. You don't need it. Like for example, if you see my other videos, you know, I love these little lanterns. I love having them in the tent at night. You know, if I want to sit and read or just, you know, whatever it might be, I just like having them hanging so I can reach up and grab it. If I've got to grab something in the middle of the night, if I hear something or, you know, the weather's going crazy, it's nice to have. But again, I don't need to bring this and this. No matter how much I like this and I like having this, I didn't 
need it so therefore I didn't bring it but yeah like I say apart from that Chris my buddy Chris who I was with he obviously had all the rifle and the spotting scope and all that so we'll do a bag dump of his go through his gear because his gear was very different to mine he had a different pack system a different sleep system different shelter system all of that so be good to go through his and get a understanding of the differences oh and for anyone who's curious this is my new hunting rifle. I've actually had it for a little bit now. I haven't had a chance to put a scope on it or anything like that. But me and Chris are probably going to go out and shoot this. He's, I'm actually going to be purchasing his scope that he's got on his setup currently. And we'll be going out, sighting this thing in, shooting some groups with it and see how it goes. It's a Tika T3X Lite chambered in 7mm REM mag. And obviously it's the lefty because I'm a lefty and I'm very excited about this because I've never in my life had a left-handed gun. So it'll be pretty fun. So yeah. But yeah, apart from that, thank you guys again for sticking with me on the hunting stuff. I know there's a lot of you out there who really enjoy it. I enjoy it as well. And I think this will be good. So as always, if you like it, give it a like. Subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you on the next one. Take it easy.